Okay, Second Chronicles 11. And when Rehoboam, now we've read so far that the, the nation has been slipped. There is two kingdoms now. There's north, there's south. Israel is north. Judah is south. Rehoboam is up north. And, uh, no, take that back. Jeroboam is up north. Rehoboam is down south. Rehoboam is Solomon's son. This follows the line of David. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, evidently he went up north, if you remember. He sent the tax collector up there. They killed him. He's trying to get the people back. Well, he lost them by not following perfect counsel. They, the wise man told him, say, listen, speak nice unto the people, and they'll be your servants. And now, well, you got to learn something. If you say something stupid and wrong, you can't take it back. You better be much careful what you speak. And he gathered the house of Judah and Benjamin. So Benjamin and Judah are together. You also read, I believe it's Simeon is also in there. But Simeon becomes that, that lost tribe. They're eaten up. But Judah and Benjamin, they, they actually become Judah. <clears throat> A hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. All right, he's going to do a civil war. You know, these people, they talk about America, you know, civil war, World War II. How many people can tell you how many civil wars are between Israel? Listen, Israel, except for Solomon's kingdom and the 33 and a half years of Jesus Christ, had been in always conflict. Now here comes Rehoboam. He's going to break that peace. Of Solomon by fighting his own brother up north. Ten, uh, two tribes against ten. He's going to get them back by force. Oh, had he done what the people told him, I mean, the, what the wise men told him to do, there would have never been a split. Had Solomon remained faithful to God, there would have never been that split. This split is because of sin. Uh, Solomon would not listen and obey, and Rehoboam would not listen and obey. America won't listen and obey. And guess what? She's bound for a split. Listen, if America does not split, does not fall, then God is a liar. Call 911 for all the Baptists who just hit the floor for me saying that. Because you know the righteous God can't let America keep on happening. What we're going to read now from Chronicles. You realize we're now, now we're in a point in Second Chronicles chapter 11. It's going to go up, it's going down. It's going to go up, it's going to go down. It's going to go up, it's going to go down. And then they're going to go right into captivity. America's going down, down, down. There has not been an up since September 11th. 2000 when those World Trade Towers came when the churches called everybody up when the President of the United States said let's pray 13 years later how many things have we've happened and we have not been called for a prayer Well President Obama that you know doesn't call us because he's on because he's lost no one's told him the way So he wants a civil war to bring the people back. But, there's a but. You've got to mark the buts in the Bible. They're very important. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, All right, he, Rehoboam wants to get the civil war. He wants north and south. He wants the grain, the red, whatever it is. And God comes in and steps in. Why didn't God stop the tsunamis? Why didn't God stop the the bomb in uh in Massachusetts? God could have, because He's going to stop this civil war. Speak unto Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, "All right, this is a message to all the south." This is a message to Judah and Benjamin. This is a message to the, to the armies. 
This is a message to the king. Thus saith the Lord. Bear be attention. You shall not go. This is an anniversary for every Christian today in the, in the church age today. I shall not go. When the Bible tells you to go. God's telling them, don't go. Uh, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house. Gee, before we, get, we, we read return every man to their tent. Now they got houses. They're established in the land. For this thing is done of me, God. The split is because of God. Because of the rebellion of man, God split the nation. God foretold it by his, by his men, men of God, by the, by the prophets. Jeroboam was told what was going to happen when he it was one of the, either prophet or him had the coat ring ripped it in 12 pieces. He said, here's 10. I'm going to rent the kingdom because of Solomon and his sin. And they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam. Now that's proper. They obeyed God on this. Can you imagine if they didn't obey? What would have happened? And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem. Okay, he's a southern tribe. He's a southern king. And built cities for defense in Judah. Well, peace is over. Solomon's in the grave. They've already rebelled against God. They've already rebelled against, against knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you know what happens when you rebel? You better build up your cities because guess what? Come and fight. And these were the times when you read the Old Testament. I mean, they had a calendar set for dates. We read a time with David that you know it was a time for kings to go to war. And as you study more and more, then when they went in the winter time, uh, then they stopped the war. <laughs> Put the war on hold, time out, and everyone go home, wait, wait till the winter's done, and we'll come back and, and force. And built cities for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem. Now see, there, there's a Bethlehem in Judah. That's where David comes from, or came from. Needham and Tekoa. I believe there's two there's two Bethlehems I'm thinking right now. There's one Bethlehem in Judea. Yeah, there's two Bethlehems. There's one in Judea, and I forget what the other one is. And Beth Zur. Now Beth means house. Bethlehem means house of bread. And Shoko and Adalam and Gath and Mashara and Ziph and Adaram and Laish. Some of these names you're going to hear again. And Azekiah and Zara and Ai Jaron and Hebron, which are in Judah, in Benjamin, fence cities. Benjamin, it just told you, Bethlehem is in the fence cities of Benjamin in Judah. And he fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and stored victual. And of oil and wine. So he builds these fortified cities. These cities are where all the armament, this is where all the, the battle stuff is. He put captains in charge of these cities. He gave them food. He takes care of his military officers. He takes care of his mi military and oil and wine. Now, I don't think that's intoxicating wine. That's fresh grape juice wine. And oil, the oil was used for anointing. Uh, lamps used oil. Those virgins that Jesus talked about, they ran out of oil. And then probably lubrication, they had chariots and stuff like that. Oil is very important. But this is not the oil that, you know, they go for dinosaurs. This is olive oil. I don't know if they had corn oil and vegetable oil and stuff like that. And in every several city, now, several city means not every city, but every other city, every third city, every fourth city. He put shields and spears and made them exceedingly strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. Now, if you go back and look at Benjamin, Benjamin was a tribe. They were known for right-handedness and left-handedness. 
The Bible speaks as Benjamin were fierce fighters. When they committed the sin in the book of Judges, you know, uh, at towards the end of the book of I mean, they were wiping their brothers out, 11 tribes. They just, two or three times, they were just wiping them out and coming out on top. Benjamin was not the one to be messed with. Now he's on Judah's side. There's a quite possibility that God told them, don't fight Israel, because Israel may have lost completely and been forgotten. That's a possibility. Because now you look at what we're, now you look at what's going to happen to Israel now. I mean, when I say Israel now, I mean north. When I say Judah, I mean south. From now on, not one king in Israel does right. You can't find a one. But in Judah, there are kings that do right. I believe six, maybe seven of them. Without having to list offhand. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of their coast. All the Levites that were in Israel, again I said north, moved south. To where Jerusalem, to where the temple, where the tabernacle are. They got out. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. Why? For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. Well, look at that. See, you can't pick a verse. That's what's wrong with these samplers. As for me and my house will serve the Lord. That's beautiful. That's pretty. But have you read the rest of the verbs, what was going on? That Israel did not choose the God of their fathers. They chose the idols. And had you just chosen, just parted this verse and left it, and said, well, the Levites just left the Israel and came down to Drew. You know, why? They were forced out. They, Jeroboam has already started rebelling against God by telling the priests, don't do God's service here in Israel. This is the first fall of Israel. They literally told the priest, no more work for you. We don't want to have anything to do with God in the right ways. Now you got to know, God put Jeroboam in this position and God already knew what Jeroboam was going to do. But still, Jeroboam has a free choice. And his free choice is to rebel against God. And look what else happens here. He said, is the Roman Catholic Church in the Bible? Yes, it is. Long before he even showed up. Mystery Babylon's even before. Look what the thing's going on here. Nothing new under the sun. And he, Jeroboam, ordained him priest for the high places. The king sets up a church state religion and executes his own priest and tells the real priest to get out. He ordained his own people for his own God for the high places. And for the devils, did you get that? It's never demons. Read the definition of demons. Why is the difference between devils and demons? In, in your Greek uh, and your Roman mythology, there were good demons and there were bad demons. Devils are always wrong, evil, wicked. And so if you read demons... You got good demons and you got bad. It's devil. King James Bible's right. Your Bible's wrong. Simple. For the devils. Did you get that? He made priests to worship devils. Now who would have you to go to church and take a piece of bread and by magical things say it is literal flesh? Who would make you want to be a carnival? That's not proper. 
Who would turn around and say, well, if you, I mean, if you say Jesus Christ, he was a good teacher, good person, but he was not God. He was of God, but not God. Who, who would teach you to say that? A devil. Who would teach you for a fact is, well, here, take these drugs and, and all this other stuff we're going to do and believe that as a religion. Who would teach you to, to take these pills or take this poison and kill yourself? Who would make you believe that? And this is religion as it happened. Who would teach you a religion where the Bible says husbands love your wife and then, well, you have multiple wives. Who would teach you against that when the Bible shows that the men that had multiple wives had many different troubles and problems in their life? Devils would teach you that. But yet, when we, when we finish our Bible, the complete Bible we have, that when the devils were, were doing their business, when Jesus was here, then Jesus came up to them, the devils pronounced and professed who Jesus Christ was. In other words, he's serving Satan. And we find that in 2 Corinthians 11, I believe it's 14 and 15, where it speaks about Satan. And it says his ministers. Well, who's the his? Satan. And that chapter talks about another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. You can go to a church and worship devils right there. Just because you throw Bible in it, don't believe it's true. Because if I wanted to, I could start a cult right now. I know enough Bible knowledge. I could, I could, I could change anybody. I can get anybody to believe anything they want to. And they take that little part of Scripture and they use it for devilishness. Listen, he had priests. Well, what's wrong? Judah had priests. I got priests. Well, Judah has a high mountain with a temple. I've got a high mountain. And I could go knocking on doors and start telling everyone to build arcs. It's in the Bible. After this week of rain, hey, a flood's coming, a flood's coming. Build an ark, build an ark and save yourself. I can go around and teach, say, don't eat meat. It's not good for you. You say, well, who would do that? There are religions out there that you don't eat meat. You eat healthy, uh, uh, organic food and all that and take care of your body. That's a religion. And there are religions out there if you do the law today. If you do the law, you're good in, in hell, and, but we can't, get, we can't give you assurance of salvation. This is devil worship. Just because you put God in it doesn't mean it's right. Listen, you take a piece of scripture and add a word to it and subtract a word from it or put a footnote, it's wrong. You've changed God's word. You may have the best intentions. But if you're defying God's word, it's a devil worship. Because if you ain't serving God, who are you serving? You're serving Satan. And look at this. For the calves move, which he had made. Now, when you read Kings and First and Second Kings, and you keep on saying the sins of Jeroboam that made Israel the same, that's the calves. He made these two calves to worship. He had priests for them. I think the Roman Catholic Church calls it a bull when they speak officially. Isn't, why do they use these words? Why do you go to church and get a bulletin? Holy cow! When you got missing children, when in the Bible it says that children were burnt to the God, they put them on the back of a milk carton, got milk, isn't that the sin of Aaron? When he made the go, hey Moses, I threw in the fire and look what came out! Ha! Ta -da! And after them, 
out of all the tribes of Israel, ten of them, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So the ones who wanted to get right, the ones who wanted to do right, those that wanted to serve God, even though they were the ten tribes, left Israel and came down south. Do you know what the Bible teaches you? If you see a church system that is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, the Bible tells you you're supposed to leave that church and go. Now, they were Jews, even though they left Israel, or they stayed in Israel. The ones that left were good Jews. The ones that stayed, they were still Jews. But in the Old Testament, they might have went to hell. Today, we're born again Christians. We're signed, sealed, and delivered. We're just not doing what God told us to do. God believes in separate, separation. These people left and went where they were supposed to go. God is all for standing out, stepping out. You say, what if we ain't got a church? There's only one, only, there's only two things to do. Pray for one and start one. That takes too much work. Well, what are you going to do? So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong. These are the ones that came from the, the ten tribes. They came down to Judah to get right with God. And they strengthened the king and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. Notice how God gives them a time. Three. They did it for three years. And Rehoboam took him, Mathahiah, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife. So let's see. The daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David. Jeremoth was David's son. So the daughter of that would be his David's granddaughter, which would make it to Rehoboam, that would be his niece, I think. It's his brother's it's his brother's daughter, probably not the same parents. David's the father, but probably not the same wife of David. Since David had multiple wives. But Rehoboam and, and Jeremoth were brothers. Yeah, wait a minute, hold on. I don't know family relations. Jeremoth. David's granddaughter. It's David's granddaughter. Rehoboam and Jeremoth. Uh, okay. Jeremoth would be Rehoboam's uncle. Something like that. You you can figure it out. Jesus Christ, blessed hope, at gmail.com. I'll have to draw that out. And Abihel, the daughter of Eleb, the son of Jesse. Well, he stayed in the family. How about that? <laughs> Draw that one out someday. Which bear him children, Jeush and Shemariah and Zaham. And after her, he took Makara, the daughter of Absalom. Ooh. Which bear him Abijah and Atai and Zizai and Shemal, Shemalamun. Absalom was he was a very great role model for a father for this child. Slept with his father's concubine, tried to throw the, the authority of of the uh, of his father. Uh, had his had his brother killed. This is a great guy, then. Yeah. Father. And Rehoboam loved Makara and the daughter of Absalom above all his wives and his concubines. Favoritism, and we saw what happened that with uh, Rebecca and, uh, and Isaac. For he had eighteen wives, three score concubines, and we've already seen with Scripture God takes a concubine 
Even you put her in another name. It's your wife. It's a marital relation. And begat 28 sons and three score daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah the son of Micah the chief. Micaiah the chief. To be ruler among his brethren. So he put the guy over his family. For he thought to make him king. And he dwelt wisely. And disperse all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin. Hey, get out of here. Take those children. That's what America does today. They send them off to, to the public school. They send them off to college. They send them off to hockey. They send them off to basketball. They send them off to cheerleader. They send them off, you know, so they can go down to the Daytona Beach for the cheerleader things while we stay home and have fun. And to every fenced city, well, at least there's protection. And he gave them victuals in abundance. Well, I hope he fed his children, his family. And he desired many wives. You mean outside of chapter 21? What a conclusion for the end of this chapter. And Rehoboam is going to go and do wrong. Can anybody see a pattern here? He's following his daddy. He's following his grandpa. Oh, gra dad and grandpa had many wives. They didn't learn any lesson. And there's one lesson you need to learn as a parent. Your children will follow what you do. Usually what's wrong. They will do what's wrong more than what's right in your life. That's, I don't know if that's a rule of life, but that just seems to be something that just happens. Listen, my own personal life was not getting anything. I, listen, I said I'd never do it. Two things I would never do. Two, one thing I saw, that it, it hurt my mother, it hurt me and all that. And when I grew up, I was involved with drinking. And there would be times when I'd get drunk and I'd be preparing to get drunk. I remember my childhood growing up with this stuff and asking myself, even with a bottle in my hand, saying, why am I doing this? My uncle Arthur, the uh, first person in my family to have cancer, used to smoke cigars. He had a surgery. I know whatever it was, I, I, all I know is he lost his voice. And after that, he lost his life. And I know of aunts and uncles who had smoked in my family. It had this thing called, I mean, it's not like today. Cancer back then was like, whoa. It was rare. I mean, it's not like an epidemic today. And even knowing stuff like that and knowing what it does and see what it done in my family, I grew up and I smoked. Now, when I got saved, cigarettes were the, I put, Thank God I put alcohol down right away. That went right down the tube and that stuck. But then cigarettes, that was a hard thing. And it's like, Lord, I, I know what it does. I see what it does. I read what the Surgeon General is doing. What is the struggle? And I was so brought up with that. I was so accustomed by that, by, by my parents, by my father, that it was in me. Probably was, when I was conceived, was probably in me and that dead too. And the children will follow what, what you do wrong more than what you do right. And a lot of times you cannot correct your child. Now listen, really look at, let's look at Rehoboam. We'll go back to David. Could David really scold Solomon for marrying multiple wives? No. Could David really scold Amon for having an incense relationship with, with someone who he was supposed to? He couldn't because he just had a relationship with another man's wife. You say, well, did Amon know that? It doesn't matter. Look what happened to Abraham and Isaac. Long before Isaac was born. 
long before. Abraham takes his wife down to Egypt and says, Honey, I'm a little bit of wimp. I don't really love you that much, but you know, if they want to kill you, kill me for you, you tell them you're my sister. Okay? Thank you, dear. They go down to Egypt, I'm his brother, and he's my sister, da 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 da. Well, years later, much, much, much years later, here is Isaac and Rebecca. They're they're not in Egypt, but they're very close. And he goes into, oh, gee, I can't think of the name of the place now. But he goes into the place, and he tells his wife, you're very beautiful. Tell him you're my sister. Isaac was never even around when his father did that. How did he get that? The servants whispering, telling stories. Maybe his father, which I doubt, but maybe his father bragged about. Maybe his mother, Sarah, had a, had a, you know, she was angry about that for the rest of her life and heard it. But whatever it is, he did what his father did, even though he may not even know it wasn't even there. To have it happen. Look at Jacob with Reuben. Reuben sleeps with his wife. He said, where did he get that from? Well, you went to grandpa and stole the blessing. Why can't I steal your wife? You got what you wanted. So here Solomon, he can't he can't rule out Rehoboam and he's not probably not even around. I know you know. When he starts marrying these women, maybe Solomon's not even around. But Solomon did it. He had a thousand wives, the Bible records. Now, with those thousand wives, and who knows how many children. Don't you think maybe somewhere in Rehoboam's life he probably felt like, I got a daddy, but first of all, he's got to compete with 99 other, 999 other women with my mom, and I don't know what number child I am. You ever think that, you know, Rehoboam sat back and said, hey, you know, I wish I had a little more personal time with dad. I mean, you would think so. Now here he is. He's got uh, at least uh, 18 wives and thir three score concubines. He's got 28 sons and three score daughters. He did exactly what he was brought up to be by his father and by his grandfather. He said, why didn't he see the, the sins of his father with the wives? Why didn't he see the loneliness that being a sibling of Solomon with all the siblings, because he was accustomed to it. It was an everyday thing. And when you do things wrong with your children every day, every week, they see that and it's like it's a second nature to them. And I'll tell you the deadly thing today for Christians is if you're a part time Christian, don't expect your child to be a part time Christian. If you just take them this Sunday morning to church, and then you expect them when they get that magical age of 18, they're going to follow you and I. They're not going to. They've seen you as a hypocrite. And guess what route they're going to go? They're going to go to the hypocrite route, because that's what you taught them week after week after week. My heart is burning right now. It used to be for three children. It was three children that my heart prayed for. With all the churches I've been in, it has been added to that. There's got to be six or eight kids right now that are truly in my heart that because of what's going on in that church, because of the present things, or things what I've known when I left that church, and things right now that that child, I see, you know what, that child's future has been destroyed. A couple of them, I think, may be easy believers. It, 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 it borders. It really borders about their true salvation. One of them, I believe, is really saved. But her life is destroyed because of the church. Little boy, I don't know. And then there's other kids right now, and they were just told they're saved. One, I don't even know we ever know what salvation is. 
Now, I'm not talking about the families. I'm talking about what's going inside the church, the family of God, the practices, the things they're doing, the things they're being brought up with. It has nothing to do with Scripture. But they throw a Bible name into it and make it Christianity. Well, I can sell you. I can. I, I listen. I can go buy three thousand garbage cans and not be able to sell them and put them, put Jesus Christ's name on them and sell them to every Christian for nineteen ninety nine with a five dollar love offering gift. And because I put Jesus Christ's name on, they'll go like hotcakes. You can't just. It's either God or in verse 15, it's devils or de the devil. There are people today in churches, they really think they're doing right. They really think they're doing what God wants them to do. They really think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they're going to go to Jesus one day and they're going to say, well, didn't we do? And Jesus is going to tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. Because you sacrifice to devils and not to God. And the devil is the liar. And Jesus is the truth. We're going to get into a mess as we continue these studies. What did it start with? How did it start? You really want to know the truth? It started with a family, Adam and Eve. The wife took over the position of the husband. The husband cowardly sat there and looked, watched the whole thing and obeyed his wife. David, as this scene right here in Chronicles, wanted more pleasure of wives than, than anything could be. But he was a man after God's heart, but he still sinned. And then Solomon took over, and now Rehoboam was taken over. And right now in chapter 11, we're seeing one complete nation. We've seen people leave Israel, coming down south to do what's right. And we see one nation, Israel, never gets right. When, when you read Ezra and Nehemiah, who go, where do they go back to? Jerusalem. Who goes back? The priest. Judah. Where's the rest of the tribes? 